Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. On the road again. On the road. Where, Where are you? Are you? Now? So check me out right here. It says Keesler Me Medical Center right here, but I, I used to be stationed yeah. at Keesler Medical Center uh, before uh, I came to this job, actually. And so uh, I'm back in the beautiful state of Mississippi, Biloxi on the on the coast. Uh, and big shout out to the team Keesler here at the exchange for facilitating me and, and getting me in this big training room by myself is kind of kind of kind of weird, kind of irky. I can hear myself talk or whatever the case may be, but uh, super excited about today and super excited about our next guest. Yes, this should be a good one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Emily, please introduce today's guest. So today we have a social media content creator and comedian who humorously captures the life and times of a military spouse. Her social media her social media videos have generated more than 250 million views worldwide. She joins us to talk about her passion for comedy and her experiences as a military spouse. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Ashley Gutermuth. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And you nailed my last name. Well done. I can't even pronounce oh, it. Oh, that only took like a month of practice. I've been saying your last name for about a month now, every single day. If that's not weird at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for having me. It's wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. We've been we've been YouTubing it and making sure we got it right. Like it's just, you know, you you can't introduce a guest and, and have their name wrong. So Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today on Chief Chat. Well, thanks for having me. I brought uh, brought some snacks. You know, you can't, uh, you can't talk about oh, that. <laughs> well, I don't know. Can you guess which that, one this is? It's French toast. Oh, yes, it is. He knows what his job is. Look at that. Well, it, it's it's pretty much the only one we have. So it's it. Listen, I, I always win. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. We we got some more tornado. So, do you call them tornadoes or tornados? I I don't even know if I I can ever eat them again. Calling them tornadoes. What? What did you just say? Tornadoes. They're not tornadoes. Am I out of my mind? You call no, them tornadoes. So. I went the first year of visiting stores and everybody would say, hey, chief, have you had the tornadoes? And, and you know, I'm from Louisiana and I I didn't do well at, at spelling, but it's it spelled like tornadoes. And then I'm like, I feel like they're messing with the chief or... there. <laughs> they're, they? They, they gotta be. Their logo <laughs> is a tornado. It says a whirlwind of flavor on it, chief. Don't let them do this to you. <laughs> so I'm I'm legit I've legit been calling tornadoes like since then and and now I feel like an idiot because there is a tornado as the as the logo. As a Duh. <laughs> It was well, a French part toast. of his hazing coming to headquarters. It was a part a of his part hazing. Of his, his, <laughs> his headquarters hazing. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. You know, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I've also got well, some I sort thought... of ranch uh, scrambled egg type thing. So <laughs> we've got all the food groups. <laughs> awesome. So can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from today? Oh, today I'm in New Jersey. McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey. Woo! -hoo! I like New Jersey. It's uh, it's been good to me. I live uh, where McGuire is. It's sort of in the middle of uh, like farms and things like that. So I live on base, but I live right at the edge of where like the local community is. And uh, my neighbors have four roosters, which oh, that's four too many, Chief. It's, four too many. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. I had to buy sound dampening curtains, not for the planes but for the roosters. The roosters are not the sound of freedom. I don't know if any of you knew that. <laughs> no, no, they're definitely not. So so I'm assuming that this is off the installation because I, I, I don't know if I've been to any um, 
any base where they allow roosters to be on on, on the well, at least without an ID card, they they gotta have an ID card at least. <laughs> yeah, the roosters definitely have to have an ID card. Um, this that is off the installation, so it's just re- the ga- there's the fence, gotcha. and then there's just the regular neighborhood. However, I don't know how many bases you've lived at, but there's definitely some bases where people steak baby chickens, baby ducks in their garages. You gotta. <laughs> <laughs> Apes could do well to start selling those little egg incubators in the springtime because that's when people start hiding weird. Somebody, I knew somebody that had a pig. You're like, that's not. Why is my dog can't be over 20 pounds, but you can have a pig? That makes no sense. <laughs> now, but speaking of things that are treating you well, the past few years have. In 2020, you performed on the Tonight Show's Seinfeld Challenge for the Jerry Seinfeld, which is so major. And you saw a lot of growth on your platforms over the last two years as well. So congrats on that. So how is the new year treating you so far? And what are some successes you'd like to experience in 2023? How is the new year treating me so far? Well, what we're it's the 10th. Um, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> You know, we're doing we're doing pretty well. I'm keeping my energy up. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like I've done some traveling already. I've been uh, doing some things with the American Legion. One of my big uh, projects this year is going to be tackling military spouse unemployment and uh, military family food insecurity. So I uh, I have many families that I buy groceries for myself. And I uh, just we were kind of trying to spread through bases across the world to try to help get people more food because food has gone way up and uh, pay not so much. Uh, so <laughs> so try trying to make sure that gets taken care of along with the funny stuff. So I like to have that dual kind of mission thing, you know, the trying to the funny stuff is great. And I love that. And I can't sort of like live without that but it, it's it needs to funnel into something good i like to use all my powers for good you you can see all of my videos which are just me intending to get my husband fired day after day that poor man <laughs> uh, uh, but then you know to be able to help other people i think is is ideal And so speaking of seinfeld what inspired you to take part in the tonight's show seinfeld challenge Oh my God, pure vanity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so the Tonight Show, cha- they, they put out uh, a call for comedians or for anybody. They said, we want to record, uh, we want you to read Jerry Seinfeld's jokes, we're, record them, and then we're going to play them for him. And uh, I recorded it. Uh, I, Jerry Seinfeld was the first uh, comedy album that I had ever completely memorized myself I was really little just listen to it listen to it repeatedly and so when uh, he picked so I didn't know I was going to be on TV I didn't know I was going I got a, a couple weeks before it was supposed to air I got a thing that said hey you know you've made it to the next round <laughs> kind of don't worry about it like this is not don't tell anybody but fill out this non-disclosure or whatever saying that we can use your clip and I was like they're never gonna use it don't be nuts then uh, the day that it was supposed to air, I looked up when Jerry Seinfeld was supposed to be on, and um, I bought TV to watch it because I didn't have, I just used like YouTube and things like that. And I was like, Ashley, you are an idiot. What does it matter with you? You're gonna pay for TV to watch yourself on TV when it's not even gonna happen. I went, it's, you know, it's all late at night. I went and woke my husband up. I was like, if you wanna wake up to be disappointed, fine, come on in. <laughs> so we, uh, uh, I ended up being the first person that he, that Jimmy Fallon announced. And he also said my name right, which was interesting. Um, but uh, then, so th- I, they played my clip and then I thought, oh my God, that's really neat. And they laughed and they had nice things to say. Uh, but then I didn't know it was a contest. That just, I don't know where they made that from because I don't remember that from the beginning. It turned it into a contest. They have me win. He sends me uh, books that he signed. Jerry Seinfeld right wrote Ashley you're so funny lovely things like that so it was really a a cool experience especially when you don't know that you're going to be on TV to be like oh there I am (laughs) (laughs) man so you 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 got you got some notoriety from from one of the goats of comedy man that's got that's got to be you know you said vanity man yeah you you had to be feeling yourself after that be like you had to show your husband (laughs) 
Like, look what Jerry Seinfeld t told me. It was that's right. <laughs> Just be like, have you seen this? Look at this. This is what it says right here. Let's watch the clip again. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, you you got a you got a military challenge coin, but I got a freaking note from Jerry Seinfeld. Like, okay, that's, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> this is my Jerry Seinfeld challenge coin right here. That'll never end up in a shadow box. <laughs> so so you um so actually you obviously you you poke fun at the military lifestyle in, in a hilarious way in your social media uh which if, if people were able to kind of follow uh follow uh not an airman a, a service member in their family throughout a journey of a four-year career or 20-year career there's so many hilarious moments it, it, some stuff you just can't even make up um so i'm glad you were able to kind of Oh, you got the PD light going. Okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> got to hydrate. With I use all of your products, Chief. I see, <laughs> man. This is, this is. Hey, can we get the exchange logo going on? Where's the exchange logo? Go, go ahead and throw that on there. Uh, the next, there we go. Bam. <laughs> Brought to you by the exchange. <laughs> <laughs> so you also give viewers a peek inside your daily life of uh, your collection of Roombas. So. Um, Oh. For those that don't know, you collect Roombas, and what influenced you to kind of be a Roomba collector? All right, collection sounds like I I take them on road shows. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> this is well. Todd. All right, uh, only one of I have six Roombas. They're all the same. They're nine uh, eighties, uh, which have carpet boost. In case any of you are interested, they don't make this brand anymore. My Roombas are all rescues. I got them off eBay. People thought they were broken. I brought them into my life, and I make them clean as hard as possible by shouting at them. Uh, I don't. For those of you that may be wondering, because something came out in the news recently that Roombas were photographing people while they're in the bathroom. My Roombas are not allowed on the internet. They are strict parental controls. So don't worry about me. <laughs> I do have six Roombas, uh, all of the same type, and uh, I'm looking to add a seventh. So if anybody's, uh, anybody's interested, uh, I like a clean floor. What can I say? <laughs> well, Roombas t definitely are game changers. I know, um, you know, I, I bought one probably about three, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And um, man, of course my wife's got me cleaning the damn thing all the time because uh, it it's, <laughs> it's gets stuck somewhere or it picks up, it picks up a penny or, or, or one of my, uh, one of my metals, one of my metal things that I, uh, the oh, back yeah. of the thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I'm not Roomba friendly myself, but uh, it's definitely changed the game uh, at the house. Uh, You're not Roomba you... friendly. Well, that's why it's picking up all your stuff because it knows you don't like it. They're like cats. Absolutely. So can can you let us know what influenced you to become a comedian? Uh, a really upsetting childhood. Just <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all starts. That's where everything Just, starts. Yeah, you got to you got to have a lot of stuff happen to you when you're a kid. Um I would say what influenced me to become a comedian? Well, <laughs> I, I just always really, you know, I like attention, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of grown up around that. I liked acting. I did voice acting for a while, would still be interested if the Exchange Radio Network would just allow me to be the <laughs> voice of any of the exchanges. I would love it. You guys, you have the, the advertisements that play uh oh, yeah. that scare the heck out of me because they always seem <laughs> it's always when i'm looking at clearance clothes and it's like welcome to the exchange radio network i'm like all right calm down <laughs> um <laughs> but i I'll always i i love always love comedy i've been obsessed with comedy more than anything else i have no time for any dramas any horror movies why why do i need to be scared why do i need to feel anything but happy i don't know exactly well <laughs> And and can you tell us who who were your co comedy comedy kind of uh, in, inspiration or or uh, folks that you really enjoyed growing up? So I love uh, there's a comedian British. I love British comedy more than anything else. I, that's been obsessed with it ever since I was little. I used to go to work with my parents who were both helicopter mechanics, and I always seemed to be called out in the middle of the night with them uh, to go uh, work on the helicopters and. Uh, we would listen to Monty Python. We'd listen to things like that. So I kind of grew up around British comedy. And uh, so people like Eddie Izzard, 
Uh, there's Dara O'Brien, super funny Irish comedian. Um, so people like that. But obviously Jerry Seinfeld, huge fan. I love Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. I love any type of comedy, really. It's just anything, anything available. So I, I got another follow-on question. So uh, the British office or American office? I actually I like the American office, funnily yes. enough. Um, I don't know why I prefer that. I, <laughs> but maybe it's because that was the one that I was exposed to first before the British office. Um, but it's interesting when you pay attention to uh, American TV, it's usually there's some repackaging of a British show that d did two seasons, which is like long for them. Uh, and then we bring it over here and then we beat it to death for like 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we squeeze every little bit of blood we can get out of that tournament turn up. But no, I I, I love the, the American the, the office. And so um, not, not to say the British wasn't good, but the American one, definitely. Agreed. Agreed. Now, comedians often say there's a big difference in stand up comedy and also social media comedy. So how did you kind of prepare to become a stand up comedian for the first time? And what has been your most memorable moment on stage? Ooh, how did I prepare to become a stand up comedian? Uh, just a lot of work. You just go out as much as possible. You go to open mics and then you just watch yourself die inside over and over again as you fail repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it is. It's just failing over and over again and then going, all right, well, I guess I'll do it again for some unknown reason that I didn't get enough attention in my childhood. Um, <laughs> and uh, what was hard for me was living on military bases that didn't have any connection to like a local comedy scene. So we, um, we were in Warner Robins, Georgia for a while there. Have any of you ever been to Warner Robins? No. Chief has. Chief, okay, Chief, Warner Robins has two roads and a red lobster. That's it. <laughs> it's closest city of anything is Atlanta, and that is four days away. <laughs> it's, it's bad. It's, it's That's, bad. That is a true um, statement. I loved living in Warner Robins because there were uh, there were snakes, like po full on poisonous snakes that I would get out and I would look at. One time I got chased by a water moccasin. To be fair, I chased it first. Um, but um, <laughs> He got back at me. So, so I just, I just always, always loved it. I wrote a lot. I still write a lot, write every day, try to, if somebody says something funny, it goes in my phone. Uh, if I say something that makes somebody laugh, it goes in my phone, you know, to try to expand on it later. It's just, can, uh, you just have to need to do it really. Um, and when I wasn't doing it, I was just really irritated that I wasn't doing it and that anybody else had figured it out. But <laughs> it's basically the truth. So what has been some of your favorite experiences as a military spouse? Well, um, are those boiled peanuts? You know it. Stop. <laughs> those are my favorite thing that the Express has. And people are like, that's kind of weird. And I'm like, but have you tried a boiled peanut? <laughs> You should oh try a boiled God. peanut. Here's what I don't understand. <laughs> these are at all of the exchanges. You don't see these anywhere else. If, if you go to the South, <laughs> you see them. But then you see them on every military base ever. And for those of you that have never seen a boiled peanut, it's a peanut that's been boiled. <laughs> and it's so good. Imagine it's that. so good. And, and then it's uh, it out of the pot, see... put it in whatever size cup you want at the Express. We That's right. It looks like the kind you'd get with like worms in it at a, a regular gas station. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this is a little more upscale. And we sell the cans too if you're not ready to eat them right away. Wait. I wonder. But okay. Here's the thing about the cans. The cans are there with, next to this. I always think they're just marketing. I don't even know that I'm allowed to buy the cans. I would have bought the cans today. Save them for later. So you're telling me I can go in and buy the cans. I'm worried that the person in the shop at is going to be like, no, that is just that's just our signage you can buy all the cans we encourage you to buy all the cans just pop them in okay. the microwave whenever you're ready we'll take it out of the can take it out of the can oh my god you got to be careful yeah hey, the reason the reason it, it's in a bait it's in a bait cup is because it's actually rooster bait so we you know we, we sell <laughs> it so you can, I'm gonna... yeah, so yeah. <laughs> This one time, one of the roosters, so the roosters do come under the fence. And the one day, uh, the rooster came under the fence and the neighbor's dog took it. 
in his mouth and was running uh, back to his house to then presumably scatter rooster all throughout his base housing house. So I chased this dog with the rooster in its mouth, me half naked on base housing going, no one likes the rooster, but you can't eat the rooster. <laughs> he put it down. I don't know. So what I'm was your question? Not being able to <laughs> eat roosters. Um, what else are your favorite experiences as a military spouse? Well, I love going to new places, meeting people, uh, and and seeing different things that I wouldn't normally get to see. Um, here's the here's the thing. So like I would. Okay, I do get to see different things, and I, even though I don't get off base much except to go do comedy, I kind of just hunker down in my house. But why, answer this for me. Why can I go to any exchange? If there was an exchange on Mars, okay, why is it all the same stuff? Why in Hawaii are we selling North Face jackets? I feel like I have to talk for all of the military spouses, <laughs> all the military families that are confused. Tell me why. Oh, the silence is deafening, well, guys. Well, the thing is, so so exchange has to get you ready for this transition because we we know we're not going to keep you in Hawaii, but three years max, like you got to go because somebody else has got to take your spot because you got a whole bunch of people on their dream sheet saying, "I want to go to Hawaii." So, so it's a mandatory kickout session out of Hawaii, and it, of course we're going to send you somewhere cold. We can't send you to two paradises in a row. So we got the like, North Face jacket. You, you're in Hawaii. You need to buy coats so you can go to Minot. This is what this is exactly. your punishment. We got you. Because we, oh we know God. how the military operates. We know the military is going to send you to somewhere crappy after Hawaii because you've been living it up for three years in Hawaii. All right. Fair enough. I think we should put that on the advertisements then so we all understand. <laughs> Awesome, um, awesome. What and are so, my other experiences? I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was going to ask you about the um, the infamous um, uh, military spouse Facebook page. So I, I'm I'm very curious because I've I've kind of dabbled in there before, and it's, it gets to be like a hornet's nest sometimes. And so I just want to <laughs> get your perspective on on the the, the military spouse uh, Facebook group, the local Facebook group. <laughs> Military spouse local Facebook groups are purely for you to watch and never to participate in. Never, never, never. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, you you join in and then you just you just go like, who? Why did they do that? Why did they post that picture? That's a bad idea. Why did you do that? Now, <laughs> it's, uh, it's they can become a bit of a mess. Uh, I you know you got to find the good ones. Sometimes they create anonymous uh vent pages they'll be it'll be like you know such and such base uh, um vent away something like that where people can vent anonymously and holy heck no thank you uh <laughs> i will keep my vents closed <laughs> but uh, look at she is she is going to town on those energy drinks and that arizona tea and her ball peanuts so big shout out to mcguire dicks uh express that got all your business this morning before this interview because i know they, they, you came in there and you racked up i don't know what the final tab was or what their ticket was but it was it was it was a, it was a good amount so big shout out to uh the shop it out there in, in McGuire. big shout out to to them for letting me steal all this thank you very much chief <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned earlier about uh your passion for uh you know spouse spousal unemployment and also food insecurity which are definitely real things uh and, and by the way the exchange does do a wonderful job at at hiring spouses and we're uh, and veterans and we're trying to we have a goal uh of 2026 to hire uh 75,000 total uh oh, wow. veterans and spouses awesome. and so um but you know can you can you kind of give us some ways that uh people that are watching uh, may be able to support military families when it comes to those uh, those areas? Well, you know, I'm working on c trying to partner with uh, some organizations so that we can accept donations and things things like that. Well, one of the important things for, that I see it now is for military families to not be afraid to share their stories. So I collected 
a lot of different stories that I'll talk about if I go like around, I'll go around the country and I'll give keynote speeches. I'll do comedy in the evening, but then like keynote serious stuff in the day to try to talk to chambers of commerce, commerce and um, like other leaders in, in their areas. And they'll, all, they'll say, we had no idea this was happening. We really want to help. People absolutely want to help. The big thing is within military communities, we, we all just want to keep it locked down, keep it, uh, keep it a secret when it, it's not working. We need to tell your stories um, so that uh, the outside world, the people that thank you for your service every day, they have a way to, to help. You know, if it's donating food or maybe they give commissary gift cards or, you know, the, anything like that. So just share your stories, share the things that are hard. Um, and if you're worried about doing that for whatever reason, you can send your story to me and I will share it anonymously. I don't give off anybody's names because I understand that. That's a big part of the food program that I am doing at my base and also my friend uh, Heather Campbell, who was one of the military spouses of the year, um, she is, is doing at Eilson in Alaska. And also uh, Monica Basket runs, Bassett runs a food pantry uh, out in Leavenworth. So we're kind of all trying to work together to pick up these these food insecurity issues. The the other part of it is understanding that military spouses want to work. There's a 22% unemployment rate for military spouses, and the pushback I'll get is, well, do they they just want to sit home all day anyway? They don't. No, they absolutely do want to work. There's military. There's lawyers. There's doctors that the lawyers used to have to retake the bar every time they move. And they still have to in some states. I know military spouses that have passed the bar four times. First of all, that is a, a superhuman being. <laughs> That's, I interviewed sure. Senator Kane. I interviewed Senator Kane about, I said, about mil the military spouse hiring. And I said, sir, if you had to retake the bar like these military spouses did, but you know, wh how do you feel about that? He said, I wouldn't be a lawyer. There, there's no way I would never, <laughs> I would never pass it again. Yeah. He's like, I passed it once and that's it. And these people just, they want to work. Uh, we're at a point now where we have to have dual income families and uh, people are struggling. When they write stories to me, <clears throat> they tell me that they are, uh, they're selling their blood. These are active duty, living on base. They're selling their blood, selling their plasma, selling their wedding rings, pawn, using those pawn shops outside the gate to to get rid of all of their things so they can buy food. So uh, the way I see that we fix this is we share the stories, we get the word out, and then we organize so that uh, people outside the military that support us will help. No, that's heartwarming. And it is a cause that a lot of people don't know about <clears throat> or just assume, like you said, that people don't want to work or will the government pay the military. So it's really amazing that you're calling attention to this. Um, we actually have members of the military community watching live with us now, and they're empathizing exactly with everything that you're saying. But what message would you like to share with our heroes today? I'd say you, I really... I love the military. I love, even though I make jokes about being a military spouse and everything that it entails, I love being a military spouse. I think it's awesome. I get to meet people and be a part of things that I never would be a part of, right? Only 1% of people in the military serve in the military. I am lucky enough that I married somebody that he, my husband's older than me. He's, uh, I don't know, I think 94 at this point. He's been in for 30 years. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for everything that they do. There's so many different pockets that I've been able to learn about the all the military branches. The Coast Guard, for example, having the toughest basic training. Uh, Submariners sub that are gone for months, that it's so hot on the submarine that they hug the missiles to try to keep cool uh that they don't their mail is not uh forwarded the negative information is taken out of their mail so that when their families write to them so that they're not upset and they're gone for months at a time with no communication those families have such a hard time and then you have each each individual little pocket and, and how we can all come together to support one another because the whole idea is to protect the country right and in my opinion, uh, it, if you don't support military families, then you don't support the military. I don't see how. If you, um, if, if you are a thank you for your service kind of person, but screw your husband or wife or kids, why would you take away their complete support system and uh, the, 
it's almost to me it's like saying well chief uh thank you very much for what you do but we don't want you to have any enjoyment or any life outside of that <laughs> you know yeah, exactly. so, So what advice would you give to other military spouses interested in using their voice and talent to build a social media presence? Well, like I said earlier, I actively every day try to get my husband fired. So far, hasn't worked. Uh, <laughs> doing the best I can. Um, if, first of all, if you're interested in any type of like arts or entertainment kind of thing or you want to do comedy, send me a message. I will help you. I have plenty of connections w within that, you know, veterans, military spouses, um, uh, dependents, anything, anything like that. Uh, if you're, uh, for example, there's the Armed Services Arts Partnership, which is a totally free organization. Uh, it, it's based out of D.C., but they do it all over the world through Zoom. I helped to mentor one of their comedy classes. It's a, a really awesome organization, totally free for dependents for military. Um, so check that out, Armed Services Arts Partnership. And uh, they do storytelling classes and, and writing classes, comedy classes, all that kind of good stuff. There's definitely resources out there. Um, and I'll, if you want to do it, send me a message and I'll help you out too. Well, I was able to um, sit in on a briefing when I was stationed here at Keystone. As a matter of fact, um, the Wounded Warrior program had like a improv comedy um, kind of uh, partnership where they they would do something with the wounded. It was specifically the, the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program, but I'm pretty sure the other Wounded Warrior Programs do the same thing. But um, just just having that as a mechanism for folks to uh, wounded warriors to learn comedy or improv or do different things. And so we we did had a briefing here, and they came and we they had the leadership do improv, and we had to kind of show our funny <laughs> side. Or, you know, I'm always funny, right, uh, uh, Kiana? And well. And Emily, Look, I'm, I'm, I'm the comedian. Do you want an of the, honest response or what? Yeah, no, I don't. Of course, I don't want to. Listen, this is my show. I just want you to agree with this me. Is That's my it. Show. Oh, you're right. Oh, just he's support him. Hilarious athlete. Like, I mean, he's hilarious. I couldn't imagine if he was on the Seinfeld cha challenge with you. you. It would probably be a different outcome. Blown me out of the water. You're right. Yes, <laughs> is that I'm, good, Chief? I'm, was that good? That was good. That's good. That's good. Kiana, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm oh gonna nod and smile. Yes, no, <laughs> everything I'm, I'm just messing. <laughs> But the, uh, but I was I was saying that to say that there's a bunch of programs out there that uh, definitely support uh, veterans and their families uh, and, and with com with the use of comedy. So uh, don't hit me up because I'm not that funny. Uh, but Ashley totally just opened <laughs> herself up to, to to hit them up. So uh, thank yeah. you for that information. <laughs> And, and not only do you wake up being, you know, funny and have the gift of comedy, you also run every single day of your life and you pick up litter <laughs> while you're running. So um, you've been on a, a running street for seven years now. And uh, what decided you that what what made you want to make this a habit and what keeps you motivated to run daily? Oh, um, maybe spite. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, I my eight year running anniversary run anniversary will be um, in a couple weeks, uh, so I've ran every day for uh, that amount of time, uh, thousands of days, and I started off back many years ago, I guess almost eight years ago. That's math. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm too busy putting my tor tornado on my the tornado. Uh, thank you, uh, my Gerber. Uh, you got my support. Uh, so, <laughs> I um, uh, I started do I started the run streak because I wanted to run with my husband during his fitness test, and so Air Force fitness test mile and a half. Um, and uh, he he didn't need any help. He's a tall, skinny, fast guy, but I wanted to do it with him. And I was just terrible. I was a terrible runner. I, it would be 17 minute miles for me, and within a uh, hundred days of running one mile every day without stopping. I went from those 16, 17 minute miles to eight minute miles to uh, shortly after that to my fastest miles, 655, which is wow. not great for like, like there's definitely faster people out there, but to go from such a big height just by doing one mile every day, people get too excited and they want to do, they'll start to do three, four miles. No, for a long time, 
just do one mile. It'll take you 15 minutes and then you can feel accomplished for the rest of the day. You can do nothing but eat these for the rest of the day and you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> And so I kept doing that and I'm good at um, being obsessive. Uh, so I just, I didn't know when I was going to stop. The funny thing is when you run every day, for the first hundred days, people are like, you're running again? How many days in a row is this? And you're like, it's 87. And they're like, oh my God, how have you done this? When you're like, they're like, you're running again? How many days in a row in this? And you're like, 2,489. And they're just like, you're weird. What? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you um, so I, uh, I, I did that for a long time. I ran the Air, Air Force Navy half marathon in D.C., which is a super cool one. I've also ran what, my own private marathon, which was the garbage marathon. On my uh, 2,000th day of running, I was supposed to run 20 miles, and the whole time I was going to just pick up trash. Uh, uh, so I got to mile 20, and I was like, I feel pretty good. I'll just keep going. So I ran to the whole, I ran just over a, a marathon that day. That, I did that out at McCord Air Force Base in Washington State. Um, so the reason why I started picking up trash is because I was coming back from a stand-up show years ago, and it was like midnight, and I was coming back on I-5, that major highway out on the West Coast, and somebody was speeding and hit me from behind and spun me like a roller coaster on I-5, mm. ended up uh, hitting into another car, and then I ended up on the side of the road and a uh, bunch of military people came, got me out of the car, cars totaled. The guy that hit me comes up, well, middle of the night, comes walking up and now his, his car stopped way far down the road, comes up and he goes, he was like, what's up? I was like, well, I guess we're just all gathered here for a prayer circle. Uh, it's midnight <laughs> on the side of the road. What, what do you think happened? And one of the military guys said, we stopped because you hit her. And he points at me and he goes, I didn't hit you, sir. And I was like, nope, nope, you don't get to do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't get to almost kill me and then call me sir. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> so um, from that, I had my running streak. I went to Madigan, the hospital on the Army base there, and they told me, they were like, you're going to be in a lot of pain. Uh, you're all jacked up. So... Here is Motrin. They literally gave me the vitamin M. And they said, uh, keep moving. You're going to want to keep moving. So I did and kept running. And I, But I had to run a lot slower because they thought that I had brain fluid leaking. Gross. And so the, <laughs> I had to run much more slowly. So I was running three to four miles every day at like an eight-minute pace. And that sent me way back. So I was like, okay, what can I do to make sure... I don't end up like uh, just, you know, passed out in a field because uh, my husband was deployed at the time, which is when all of the accidents are supposed to happen. Um, so I uh, had had all these issues. I still have issues from it, uh, brain issues. But I started I started running with a stick with a nail in it, which is what you're supposed to do on a military base. That's real safe. Um, you just <laughs> run around your neighborhood, big stick with a nail in it, just stab in the ground. Doesn't make security forces upset. Uh, so I did that for a little while, and uh, then I just transitioned to I run with a bag, I run with gloves. Um, uh, sometimes people ask me, what is the grossest thing you've ever found? Because I have picked up trash for my, I have almost three years of daily picking up litter. It's about a pound a day, so I've picked up uh, like 1,500 pounds of litter so far at various places around the country. Um, and the grossest thing I've ever found, I can't tell you. It's too gross. It is that bad. It's that bad. <laughs> It's that, it is that disgusting. You can go on my Instagram and there's a little highlight bubble that will tell you about it. But uh, here, no. Mm -mm. It's gotcha. <laughs> well, that it, it sounds like sounds like a dorm inspection. When we go in the dorms, we see some pretty pretty weird stuff uh, in the dorm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just yeah, but we won't. That that's for another show. That's for Chief Chat After yeah. Dark. Chief uh, yeah. after 9 p.m. I think that'll yeah, be a hit. <laughs> and, and I and actually I hate to one up you because that's not what I do. I don't <laughs> one up anyone. But I've been I'm, I've been on the streak myself. Uh, you know I I've been eating candy for the last 42 years of my life every <laughs> single every single day. And so uh, what is your favorite candy? You know, uh, gummy bears, the Haribo gummy bears. That's that's my go-to all-time favorite. 
that's it explains why they're so heavily stocked within atheists. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that was, <laughs> like, I that was have my fix. That was <laughs> exactly that. That was one of my priorities when I came into atheists is to make sure that we get fully stocked of Haribo uh, gummy bears. So you know, sorry, boss. I got I got one win. That's it. <laughs> I met some, um, one of the generals once that was in charge of services, and his business card had a coupon for the shop ad on it. Does your business card have a fifteen percent off coupon on the back? No, it does. It does not. Man, That's, well, maybe that was genius. He should have passed that along. Oh my goodness. See, <laughs> look at that. Think, Where's... think, chief. Think. <laughs> listen, you, you put. <laughs> listen, you put jokes. Anytime you hear something funny, you put something on your phone. I get feedback on coupons and, and giving, showing love. I'm putting that in my phone. So I'm. Well, if you send me your business card after this meeting, I will consider paying for all of these things the next time I go. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you're getting so much love in our live feed. I'm just going to share a few comments with you. Um, first, it's a question from Charlene, and she wants to know how old is Bruce and does he shed that much that you need six Roombas? <laughs> we cannot blame Bruce for my Roomba obsession. Bruce is my kitty cat. Uh, he is seven, and he's lived in uh, a lot of different places. He's a he's a military cat. He's he's PCS himself. Um, he he does shed, but he loves to be brushed, so it's not that big of a deal. He also doesn't mind the Roombas at all. They bump into him, um, especially Todd. There's uh, I have one bad Roomba, and his name is Todd. And uh, so anytime that the Roombas are misbehaving, Todd gets blamed. Uh, but I can, all of the Roombas could just bam into into Bruce over and over again. And he, he almost acts like he likes it, like it's a little Roomba massage. So we're looking into that. <laughs> He's not the brightest of kitty cats, but, you know, we're here for it. Funny. No, and Rena also says she loves watching you, Ashley. She enjoys the military spouse humor because she can always relate to that. And then oh, Robin well, thank you says, very much. Oh, yeah. Robin also says, we can't wait to see Ashley on the America's Funniest Veteran and Military Spouse Competition. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that surprising? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm open to anything, any type of performance, any type of uh, anything, anywhere. I don't know if you can tell. I do. I. I am very private. <laughs> All right. This is going to take a lot to get you out there, but I think you can get, make it happen. And then one last thing. It's from Bobby. He says that joint base McGuire Dix Lake curse equals the middle of nowhere surrounded by roosters and cement plants. You're living the dream, Ashley. <laughs> living the dream. Just like going through the gate. How you doing, security forces? Living the dream. Stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it. I like New Jersey. I can get into New York City a lot. It's easy for me to get around and do various stand up, but it's also neat. New Jersey, you know, I was out at, in Seattle. First of all, the trash is very different. The trash on <laughs> Joint Base Lewis McCord. Okay. This is, we'll get into, I, I had names for the trash out there. I called them stop sign shots. Now, this is a little, <laughs> I, I would find at stop signs just a bunch of little shop bottles. Like somebody was like, well, here's a break. This is what uh, this is where I'll stop. <laughs> I found a half gallon jug of Jack Daniels. I was like, this, this is expensive. Now on uh, Mag on McGuire, I find uh, uh, things that have like like the explosive signs that blow off of trucks. Those are fun. I found um, the uh, uh, I've, yesterday. I found somebody's flight line badge. You, those are not good to lose. I don't know. If you know that. <laughs> not, not at all. I've, <laughs> I've found the keys to the security forces cars, which come in a little package uh, that say all the things like, like, you know, the mechanical checks and all those things. I found those in the middle of the road. And so I called security forces and I said, hey, I found your keys. And then they called me back and they said, where did you find them? In your house? And I was like, no. What do you, <laughs> what do you, what do you think I was doing? <laughs> Silly. So I got I got a, one comment that I want on my page. I want to read to you. Um, it's uh, Dale Killip. He says, 
I love watching your videos in the exchanges and the commissaries and looking in the comments and people guessing what base you're at. Oh, Do you get yeah. recognized while shopping in the exchanges and commissaries? I do. Uh, and I don't mind. I love when people come up and say hi or if they want to take a picture or something like that. What is weird is when people will send me a message afterwards and they're just like, hey, I saw you outside your house. You look great today. And you're just like, mm, OK, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't often I don't often say where I live or where I am until after I've left that place because I get a lot of messages where people say that they would like to stuff me in a van. And look, I know the lemon lot has a lot of good purchases. <laughs> I would not like to be shoved in a van. <laughs> so I do try to, to keep that. This is my own personal comedy opsec of, <laughs> of where, where I am and, and what I'm doing. If I do end up, uh, you, you know, kidnapped, um, I do hope that they'll send someone for me. Send the military spouse brigade. They'll find me before anybody else. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> no, no. no, no you, we gotta protect. Ashley, we gotta we gotta protect you at all costs. You, your national <laughs> national treasure. <laughs> well, so, so glad. Um, besides, you know, trying to stay away from uh, getting stuffed in a van. Um, are there? What else is ahead of you? Is there any upcoming projects or video fans should be on the lookout for? Well, I've recently bought some wigs, which has been great. Um, <laughs> the, that's been a lot of fun. I, you know, I I just want to do. I do. I do have some really cool things coming up. I'm going to go on tour and going to do uh, a variety of things. I'm also going to be co-hosting the American Legion podcast. Uh, this past week, I was in Orlando with the American Legion uh, talking about their mission, and um, we were at the Student Veterans of America conference, uh, which was super neat. And I got to meet like all these different people that have just different causes. So many people want to help the military, and so many people mm -hmm. in the military like are so capable. Military people, military families, military spouses, they are all exceptionally capable people the the underground army that exists within there it's it's funny if you reach out for help to a group of military spouses and you're just like wow you you used to produce a tv show you uh you're a lawyer oh you're a you were a chiropractor like all of a sudden you'd see all of these things that come out that you're just like oh my god like it's amazing the the underground network of connections that military families have um, so yeah, so I've got some uh, a lot of cool shows uh, coming up, and uh, but most importantly, if you would like me to come to your town, I would like to come to your town. Um, I've been trying to work with MWR and Armed Forces Entertainment. Uh, they ha they were talking about sending me to on a tour of the Japan bases, which would be awesome. Open to doing that. It's not a done deal yet, but I'd love to. Any MWR that will have me anywhere in the i for a while there because it's so hard to be able to perform on military bases i said i'm going to do the pampered chef tour okay we're going to pampered chef tour i'll sell pampered <laughs> chef i'll just go to people's houses and uh i'll do comedy and then pretend to sell pampered chef turns out jag sends me a message says that's illegal you can't do that you have to get approval to perform on base like well why this makes no sense <laughs> so yeah, if, if anybody can make that easier for me That'd be great. <laughs> leave, it to, leave it to Jag to spoil everything, man. I oh know, my God. right? No. Just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> You're right. So before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers where they can go to follow you and keep up with all of your funny videos? I am everywhere. If there's social media on the moon, you will find me. At some point, you will all become so exhausted by my very existence that you'll want to pelt me with eggs. Uh, I put out so many videos and so many things, uh, but it, it's really, I, I put out so much because I'll get nice feedback from people that say, Hey, you really helped me get through my day or I wasn't understood at all. I thought that I was the only one The, you know, what really brought it home for me. I made a video once where I, um, talked about, uh, I, I was on the phone talking to my friend. My friend said that she had met an army guy and they were going on a date and I said, well, Janine, have you checked his ankles? 
And she, she said, no, I, I, what, do you, what do you mean? And, and I said, does he have hair on his ankles, Janine? This is important. Does he have hair on his ankles? And she said, he, he, he does. I said, he's not in the army. You got to run. There's, there's, there's no military man that's got hair on his ankles. It has all been rubbed off by the boots. Uh, and the, the amount of people that got back to me that said, oh, my God, I thought I was the only one that had weird hairless ankles. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, things like that. So it's really nice. What I want is for like, especially, you know, like in the comments on my pages to be able for people to like make uh, connections and, and be friends and have them be like nice places. Um, I want to expand my website to try to like feature military spouses and things like that uh, and, and businesses and uh, try to try to help in that way. But you can find me everywhere. I am on TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest. YouTube shorts. I post on LinkedIn, guys. It makes no sense. I don't know why I do it, uh, but I just figure, why not? This is my job, right? <laughs> you could catch me on LinkedIn. There you go. Man. So my mind instantly went to my to my ankles now, and so I'm, I'm trying to check to my boots to say, check do em. I have, check. I think I, I, I don't think I have hair on my ankles. You're, she's right. <laughs> Man, VA claim. Okay, v okay, VA, VA claim. is coming. <laughs> Tonight is bad back, hairless ankles. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And, and so, just I want to plug our stuff too for our Chief Chat viewers. You can find this episode uh, on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us here at 11 a.m. Central on January 17th. We have producer Howard Gordon as he joins the chat. But Ashley, you were an amazing interview. We got we got a chance to to get tor tornadoes and tornadoes. You got you got a Gerber. We, we got the, the Pedialyte. The I mean the Shopette man. We need to get you a, a sign. I don't know how tall you are. Uh, you know, like those security force. Uh, don't don't steal from the exchange or don't steal. Don't steal. We'll, don't we'll put, just put we'll, a picture of me do not let this woman out without paying uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. but but we i really appreciate uh you being you know so open and 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 vulnerable and also tackling those issues that need to be tackled um uh food insecurity and uh spousal unemployment is a real thing uh real things that our leaders at the highest levels are, are trying to tackle and, and I'm glad you're trying to do whatever you can at your level. Um, and uh, big shout out to your husband for his uh, going on 30 years of service. Um, and, and also you for serving, because uh, as we highlight, man, the, the family serves just as much as the, the service member serves. And, and there's, there's so much that the family has to kind of endure during this whole kind of career of, of a military member. Uh, so, you know, big shout out to the military families out there. We love you. We support you. And Ashley, just thank you so much for all that you're doing. And and you know, you know, we 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 got big fans here at the Exchange. Uh, now we're gonna make sure that the uh, Exchange Radio Network. Every time that you're thinking about stealing, the Exchange Radio Network is gonna come on. <laughs> I would love that. I would absolutely love it. <laughs> Call me out. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But just, no, just thank you again for for just spending a little time with us. Uh, this means a lot to our, our exchange community and just the military community in general. And, uh, man, you got some huge supporters here, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. I'd love to work with you guys uh, in whatever way I can. Let me let me know. Let's, uh, let's get some people engaged. I think that's the main mission of the exchange. Uh, that's, <laughs> but that's why you put the diamond rings right right out front, right, right by when you first walk in. So let's, let's do that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tech school marriage. We're gonna get some tech school marriages going on. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's how we do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you don't mind hanging on till after the uh, the live, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But we'll we'll go ahead and end the show right here. Thank you so much, and uh, Chief Chat out.